So our next task is going to be to identify and remove any of the default materials that got created on import because we're going to want to create material instances and then reuse the names that are associated here with these materials. So we can get that data from the static mesh. For each material assigned in your DCC, it's going to create a material slot and give it a material name and a material slot name. And those will correspond to the materials here that get created. And that comes from the material name itself. So this is Maya. There's the material name, and if I were to modify this and re-import it, it would create a new material with that new name. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this data off of the static mesh. And if we go to the documentation for static mesh, and we scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see there's a property called static materials. Static material is essentially a dictionary. It's human readable, and it has some properties. It has a material interface, a material slot name, and the UV channel data. I'm not really ever worried about this, but these two are pretty useful. So the material interface is essentially a very high level grandparent material object. Both material instance and material inherit from material interface. So what this property do is doing is it's returning back the material itself. So whatever happens to be assigned to that slot, that's gonna be returned by this property. So let's go ahead and get that. Also, I made a little typo here. That needs to be a lowercase f. So this could arguably be a new function, but I'm gonna just kind of keep it simple here. So I'm gonna get all of the static materials associated with my static mesh. Let's take a look at what it's got here. So here's our static material struct. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see we have the path to our material that we created, which is all we need to delete this asset. Deleting assets is gonna be pretty easy. We'll just go over to the API documentation. And we can find this method here on the editor asset library utility class. And all it's gonna take is the asset path to delete. Now the static material is actually gonna to return to us the material itself. So we need to get the path. So I'm just gonna print this out to confirm that I'm actually getting the path here of the material. So there's our path. And we'll head over, try this again. All right, it looks like we're getting a warning here. Force delete object failed to delete our material. This package is now potentially corrupt. So we'll take a look and you can see it was removed from the static mesh. This is now using the world grid, but the material still exists. So what I'm gonna do just to make sure I've got kind of a clean pass, I'm gonna just delete everything. It may be that because we're importing assets over things that already exist, that there's some kind of a weird permissions thing. And we'll just try this again. All right, perfect. So now we can see the static mesh is assigned to the world grid material and that material that was created by default is now deleted. All right, making progress. Now we need to make our material instance. And to do this, we're going to need to use asset tools. Asset tools has a method on it called create asset. And in order to create an asset tools object, you need to use the asset tools helpers class for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's one of those little gotchas. So we don't need to be doing this every time. We can just create one asset tools object. And I'm just going to copy this for my other screen. Get asset tools. And now that we've got our asset tools instance, we're going to use create asset. And 
and this is going to have a few inputs. The first will be the asset name, then the path where we're going to save it, the class, and the factory. That's the default value for calling context, so we're not going to worry about that. We'll start with the asset name. In this case, we can get it from our static material. And it will be the slot name. So if we take a look at our static material documentation, there's our property. So static material dot slot name, add a comma at the end there. The next thing we need is the path. We'll be using our folder path. After that, we're going to need the asset class. So we can probably use material instance if this doesn't work. We may need to use material instance constant, which you can see right here. Constant dynamic are the two likely alternatives, but we'll try this one first. And then for the factory, I'm just going to add the word factory to my search here. And you can see we have a limited number of options, material instance, constant, factory, new. So this is going to throw an error because one of these needs to be instantiated and I can never remember which one, but Unreal will tell me. I'm going to go ahead and add some code to delete this stuff procedurally. Try that again. All right, nativize object, cannot nativize material instance constant factory new as object, allowed class can be a factory. So this is the one we need to instantiate. And that just means we need to add some friends at the end here. And let me delete this stuff. All right, new asset wasn't created because the supplied factory does not support the supplied class. So that's probably, this just needs to be material instance constant. Beautiful. Okay, so here's our material instance constant, static mesh, doesn't have anything assigned yet. This is basically totally blank, which is perfect. Okay, fantastic. In the next video, we'll take a look at setting this material as the parent and then assigning this material instance to this geometry and then assigning these textures to this material instance.